Is that laptop yours? Uh, it's, uh, you don't need the laptop. Uh, you got a book. <laughs> you got the book. It's all in the book. And I don't know. I, I truly... The, you don't know. The serious answer is that I truly do not know the answer to that. Did you leave a, a laptop with a repairman not in that Wilmington? I remember. Not, not that, that you I remember. remember. No. No. But whether or not um, somebody has my laptop, whether or not uh, it was a, uh, my was hacked, whether or not there it, it exists a laptop at all, I truly don't know. Are you missing a laptop? Not that I know of. For years, Hunter Biden has adamantly denied that he left his personal laptop at a Delaware repair shop back in 2019. But now it's appearing Biden and his legal team are changing their tune and going after the man who brought that story to light. They allege John Paul Mac Isaac, he owns the laptop shop in question, worked with former President Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani to weaponize its content. They're demanding the DOJ even launch an official investigation into the matter and investigate Mac Isaac. Well, Mac Isaac's fighting back. John Paul Mac Isaac is the man who found Hunter Biden's laptop, or, or at least was given it. Uh, Brian Della Rocca is his attorney. Gentlemen, thank you both for coming on. Uh, several questions and a few things I want to get to you. I wanted to start out with this that a uh, question for John Paul Mac Isaac that maybe you haven't gotten, uh, or maybe uh, pull this off, or maybe that uh, maybe you haven't heard yet. Um, but when we listen to that soundbite, when he was being interviewed, when Hunter Biden was being interviewed by CBS News, he had no clue, or at least he, he says he had no clue that he had a missing laptop. Uh, he doesn't have any record that there was a missing laptop. He denied it. When he came into your shop, were you there? Were you the one that actually took it from his hands? Was Hunter in front of you? Did he hand it to you? Do you remember that moment? Oh, absolutely. April 12th, 2019, Hunter Biden came into my shop for a data recovery. And I find it really hard to believe that after all this time, he still doesn't remember because his lawyer remembered. His lawyer called me up the day before the uh, or the night before the New York Post ran the story and they wanted the laptop back. So I, I, unless he's, it's a horrible lawyer that doesn't communicate with his clients, I just find it really hard to believe Hunter never knew that that laptop was his. Is there anything that you remember about that moment that perhaps maybe a, a state of mind, if you will, that maybe he would not have remembered coming into that shop? Do you recall anything like that? Was it a normal interaction? Uh, both times that he came into my shop, uh, he was intoxicated, um, but he was able to drive and he was coherent. And he, I explained to him at length the policies and procedures in my shop, as well as the procedure in recovering his data. And he acknowledged that he understood it and he signed the document. So I, again, I, you know, he, he was inebriated, but I don't think it, his judgment was impaired. Can, more I, than can I ask you how you knew he was intoxicated? No, I could smell it. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the meat of the story. Brian, I wanted to get to you on this, his attorney in this matter. Things have changed. Um, there's allegations made here that this, uh, this is what Hunter's attorney sent out, saying that this failed dirty political trick directly resulted in the exposure, exploitation, and manipulation of Mr. Biden's private and personal information, uh, unquote. Uh, this is from Abby Lowell, uh, the attorney representing Hunter Biden. Brian, I know that you pushed back. You wrote a letter to Merrick Garland, the AG, saying, I am concerned, as I'm sure you are, that the Biden... Uh, team demanded a letter not only containing potential violations of U.S. law using false information to report an alleged crime, but also ethical violations. Um, and you go on to talk about false information. Can you elaborate on that, Brian, and, and why you chose to send out that letter? Do you believe that false statements were sent out? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the reason uh, we decided to essentially counterpunch um, was because the letter from Abby, uh, from Abby Lowell contains so many inaccuracies. Um, also, when you actually get into the, some of the details and the citing references, you'll see that Abby Lowell paints a, a different uh, story than is actually said in uh, the citations. So I have an example in there about how um, he talks about how someone worked for Senator Ron Johnson, uh, yet that person has has no ties to Senator Ron Johnson. Um, and the citations to which Abby Lowell refers 
say nothing about uh, Senator Ron Johnson. So there are numerous lies. There are a lot, there's a lot of information in there that really uh, Hunter Biden knows uh, and any reasonable person who has been paying attention knows are inaccurate. And honestly, I didn't, at first I wasn't going to write a letter because I had, a, I really felt that if any of these figures actually prosecuted John Paul, then it would look more like a political play than anything else, because the letter held zero uh, actual crimes. And you talk about political play. That was what was alleged by Abby Lowell, at least in the, the letter that was sent out. And this goes back to John Paul MacIsaac. If I can go back to you, John, on this. They allege that, that you essentially conspired with Giuliani and the Trump uh, campaign. Um, what is your response to that, sir? Did you conspire with the former president's team? You know, I, I spent like over a year trying to get this laptop to the authorities. And when the FBI failed to act on the evidence for the impeachment trial, I sent my father and uncle, both retired colonels in the Air Force, to members of Congress to reach out. The pandemic and fears of Russian intimidation were, were or Russian paranoia were ripping Congress. So, you know, our, our cries for help fell on deaf ears. Rudy Giuliani was a lawyer for the president of the United States. I went to the Justice Department. I went to Congress. I was running out of branches of our government to go to. So I chose Rudy Giuliani because he was a lawyer. He was a lawyer for the president of the United States. And he had been doing some research in regards to the uh, impeachment trial. So and I had seen data on that laptop that should have exonerated the president or at least been admitted as evidence. And so that was my last chance was to go to Rudy Giuliani. To say that I conspired with him, to that this was a plot the whole time, is just absurd. I fought tooth and nail to make sure that this got to the proper people. And eventually it was a lawyer for the president. Brian, your response to that, how will that, how will that hold up based on the allegations made by, by Abby Lowell um, in terms of what you just heard there from John Paul MacIsaac? Well, John Paul never, actually has never spoken with uh, Mr. Giuliani, uh, had only interacted with, uh, with Rudy's attorney, Bob Costello. Um, and John Paul was only involved in getting the information to the right place, uh, had zero part in any type of political strategy or uh, releasing of the information. He, he simply did what, what was right. He, he gave the information to the authorities. And the, authority, the authorities included Rudy Giuliani, who was acting as the president of the United States attorney during an impeachment trial. So uh, John Paul yeah. did no, there, were, there was no calculated political move. John Paul was not looking to harm anyone. He just wanted to uh, get, make sure the information was out there to protect the public and to protect uh, the United States. All right. Uh, I'll leave it there. The final question really quickly for John Paul. I, I know we, be, we began the statement or the segment in regards to Hunter Biden coming in your shop. You remember that day very well, claiming he was intoxicated, that you could smell it. Do you have any surveillance footage uh, in your shop where Hunter came in that day? Unfortunately, uh I was blessed with never having to worry about security in my shop. We never had any shoplifting or uh, any break-ins, and I just never felt the need to have cameras. There were cameras outside the building, but I think they were on a tape. And keep in mind, when he came into my shop, he was the son of a former vice president. His dad hadn't announced his candidacy. This was just another person, another customer that I was trying to make some money off of by doing service, by trading the skill set that I had for, for money, which he never paid. And, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a shame. We'll leave it right there. We appreciate the time uh, in sharing that story. Obviously, this will continue. We'll try to keep the viewers updated as best as we can. Brian De La Rocca joining us as his attorney here, John Paul Mac Isaac. Thank you both, gentlemen. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.